voice. All right, good evening to the Dreammakers team. We are super duper excited. We have an incredible guest. Yes, recording in progress. Mr. AJ Ridout, who's gonna be in the house this evening in just a couple minutes. But I wanna tell you a little bit about AJ. The boy likes long walks on the beach with Mrs. Jill, right? I know that. So the next time you come to Wilmington, uh, I won't be taking uh, that walk with you. But I know for a fact that Mr. AJ, married to his beautiful and incredible wife, Miss Jill, they have four beautiful kids. And you ready for this? They got two cats, two dogs, five chickens. Five chickens. I mean, I hope you have a rooster, AJ, right? Because I know Greg Baden also has a lot of hens as well. He went to App State, but then also graduated from UNCW with an economics and finance degree. So guys, we've got a very smart gentleman in our hands this evening. So I hope that you guys are ready because he went and worked at bb &T, So he really kind of specialized in the banking industry and uh, helped a lot of folks out in that arena, but realized that, you know what? The grass definitely wasn't good. So what do you think he did? Guess what he did? He went and started working with NASB, started in 2013. I believe that we started about the same time, AJ. And um, y'all, he is one bracket about to hit junior partner. So y'all, this is awesome. This is a treat. A lot of people don't know this, but if I yeah, don't know like the question, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm going to reach out to Mr. AJ and Scott Davis. So um, those guys are my little wingmen when it comes to um, knowledge and benefit specialization. So guys, without further ado, let's put our hands together, even though I can't hear you, but that's totally cool. Guys, let's put our hands together for Mr. AJ Ridout. What up, dream makers? Hey, thanks for having me on. Hey, you know what, AJ, didn't you used to do Amway? You did used to do Amway, didn't you? I did. That's how that's how uh, Jill and I met Cora and Jordan and Chris Can Robert. Uh huh. That's pretty intense, right? So here's the crazy thing. Did you ever do? Who was your team that you were on with um with that with Amway? Uh, Snipes, Tidwell, same team as Jordan, but we didn't work together, so to speak. Did you did you ever do that little slogan where I know that this is what we did when I was like 16 years oh. old? Oh. <laughs> Freedom! Yeah. Woo, <laughs> That's awesome. Well, AJ, yeah. Luke, man, I know we've got a lot to discuss this evening, and um, you've got some pretty incredible notes. I know that we're going to be going over growth mindset, fixed mindset, knowing your recourse, establishing a system, but then also it's all about placement. It's not just about what you write, it's about what you keep. And then, of course, a lot of you want to know how in the world can we get better if you're a builder, a new builder, existing builder, shoot a freaking partner like me, and you still need help with your in and ups when it comes to combination things. And guys, this is why we have AJ on. We have him for the next 40 minutes. So I'm very excited for him. I want you guys to keep your lines muted. And um, other than that, AJ, I'm going to mute myself. Sir, take it away. Yeah, hopefully we get a good amount of dialogue going up in here. So I'm, I'm a big fan of back and forth. And eventually, hopefully we get some good Q&A going. But yeah, when Ashley asked me to come talk to you guys about carriers and underwriting, things like that, um, you know, it's something that I don't know, very early on in my career, I understood that if I wanted to be not just good at this, if I wanted to be great at selling and then teaching, it was just something that I needed to study. I knew I wasn't going to be great at it at the beginning, um, just like any other, you know, profession that I've had previous to this. Like, it's scary sometimes. Like, you don't, Jordan said, this is kind of like being in a baby pool with all these hoses filling it up. And it's just a lot at you at once. So if you realize that this is just a process and it's not something that you have to be perfect at, it's more about progression over time that you're going to get good. I heard on a podcast, um, something about Tim Ferriss. He said, you don't have to be first at something. You just have to learn how to do it well and then do it better than most and do it often. And over time, quality results start to come in like a machine. So I was like, man, that's so powerful. And it's true to this industry, especially as a broker. It's not like if we worked at State Farm, we just got to preach State Farm and that's it. Um, we have to learn about every carrier that we have available to us um, to have the ability to help as many people as possible. So when, um, you know, I, I started to look at this, it's more or less a mindset to me. 
So understanding that failure is a great teacher. And it's almost like going out there and experimenting out the gate. And the blessing is, is we also have a system in place where we have step six and we get to call somebody who's been there hopefully a million times to help us walk through the process. But if I take that mindset of, hey, I'm going out to learn and I'm going to earn along the way, um, everything's going to be OK. There's no emergencies. I'm not a failure. Um, you know, it's, I'm only a failure unless I quit, basically. So I'm going to look at this as something that I want to get better at over time. So if you're within your first you know, few months or if you've been here six months, a year, look, guys, there's going to be questions you guys ask me, hopefully at the end that you stump me and I still don't know. And that's cool because guess what? If I don't know the answer, I'm going to tell you number one, and then I'm going to go find the answer for you and get back to you. And that's one thing that I've learned is it's okay to not know everything, know your resources, like Ashley said, and, you know, over time, you're going to become a machine. So understanding that it's a growth mindset, not a fixed mindset, I think is very important. Ashley, um, somebody with a fixed mindset is they got to think they have to know everything up front. And I know I hear this a lot of times with new agents is, oh, man, I feel like I need to know more before I go talk to somebody. And if we can look at it differently and go, hey, how many people can I go see? How many opportunities can I go through? How many different scenarios can through the fastest, I'm going, if I have a learning mindset, a growth mindset, I'm going to be able to create a machine over time. So number one is just understanding that you need a growth mindset, not a fixed mindset. Um, you know, number two, I would say is definitely being a student of the business. Guys, there's folks that have probably been here, been here longer than I have that they ask the same questions all the time. It's not right or wrong. It's okay. Um, but they should know certain things and they shouldn't be asking the same questions over time. So, you know, they, they might not be trying to grow an agency, but they've been doing it for seven, eight years. And to me, it's like, man, this is what I do for a living. I'm going to be freaking great at it. So, you know, over time, you should get to a point where you're learning new things and not retreading all the time. So be a student of the business, study your craft. Um, that's a, that's a big thing. Knowing that NAS being your uplines there, I told Ashley, I think it's important to have a mindset of fiercely loyal to the people you're in business with and the system, but also, also being fiercely independent towards this is my own business. And if they don't know the answer, dude, come heck or high water, I need to know it. So I'm going to go find it. And it's just that kind of attitude that puts you in a position to learn this stuff. Uh, quicker. So, and obviously everybody's heard that line, Ashley, you know, confidence really sells. And when you're more competent, you have more confidence. Um, when you're more competent, you have more confidence. So just knowing that, Hey, I got somebody in my corner that's going to help me regardless if I know the answer or not, but if I can't get them, I have the resources and I know where they're at. I know how to get them and I'm going to find the answer no matter what. I'm not going to leave a house or a situation without being able to help somebody. So Ashley, come at me with a couple of questions here. I know I sent you a text message hey, about knowing your resources and establishing a system for yourself. So yeah. what do you guys have in place for, for you guys? Well, like, what do you guys use as far as sure. a system for resources? So when it comes to, you know, system resources, we obviously have our Google Drive, okay? So a lot of folks, when it comes to understanding our carriers and understanding um, especially those 13 carriers like the AIG, the Gerbers, the UHL. Um, we do have a cheat sheet. And if you've never seen the cheat sheet, um, it's really cool because it's a quick glance, just like what AJ was talking about is being, a, being able to really be independent. And if you don't know the answer, of course, sure, check with your upline. But hey, look, go to the cheat sheet. But what we don't want you to do, especially if you're a new agent, is within your first 90 days, we do want you to do your in and ups right? Because you're going to learn a lot there. But I think AJ, when it comes to a lot of builders, we have a lot of builders on right now and they want more confidence in being a stronger in an upper, I guess you could say, right? So um, knowing your recourses and understanding and establishing your systems, how will that help when it comes to builders and in and ups? Oh yeah, hundred percent. So number one, my advice is to get really good at it yourself. Like that's where, like when I take it in and up and it was a, a progress for me, more or less, I didn't want to screw up and hurt the sale. But when it came to underwriting and product knowledge, I just stink in, I, I just, I know it. But if I didn't, I had my resources. So before all 
have now. I think Jordan, myself, one other gentleman, I think helped us create a cheat sheet early on. And I put it not on a Dropbox, but on the Word doc. When I get in and ups, I know how to get to it within a couple of seconds. And I'm pulling up that cheat sheet more than you guys think. So I have brain farts just as much as the next guy. And there's so many different scenarios, combinations, where sometimes I just need a little bit of, you know, a, an edge. Maybe I just need a starting point to jump off on. So cheat sheets are huge. Take what the system gives you and then make it better for yourself. Like it, if you don't want to go to elevation.market all the time for applications, create a doc, document source for yourself. If you don't want to go to DreamMaker's website for everything and just because you got to log in, what, whatever the case may be, I don't know what y'all's website entails, but if that's a resource for you, take what you use most and create basically a, a quick reference guide, so to speak, and then build on it. So things that I have are application, um, sorry, underwriting guides, height and weight charts, and then that cheat sheet that I'm continually to like evolving. Transamerica changed their underwriting. We got new carriers. So those three basically resources I have in Word docs um, and I can get my hands on them in a matter of seconds. So, you know, that I think when you're taking in and ups um, to have those resources that you can pull from very quickly, it's just powerful. And then being able to style a conversation, like to me, when I'm taking an in and up, I know a lot of agents are in the house that they get some basic information, but a lot of times as an underwriter, it's not what's on the surface. It's that second and third follow-up question. So if I need to know that information, I'm going to ask a question that helps the agent in the house dig. And hopefully they're paying attention and making a note to that follow-up question. But at the same time, I'm also pulling up those resources at the same time to put me in a position where, crap, I know I can help them if no matter what answer they give me. So it's just creating a little bit of time. Amen. And absolutely. So obviously the resources, again, you know, especially with the DreamMakers team, with the Google Drive, is you have all of it right there. And you've got your underwriting guys, you've got your height and weights, um, you've got your cheat sheets, knowing where those resources are and obviously really looking at them. So it's almost like the aspect of instead of asking your direct coach, hey, uh, what's the height and weight requirement for Liberty Bankers? How many of us do that? How many new agents do that? So what you want to do is you want to not just give a man a fish and feed him for a day. You want to teach a man how to fish so he never goes hungry. So how you do that is you will probably tell your agent, hey, even if they're in the home, hey, go to Google Drive, go to the agents, go to the agent guides, and the height and weight is right there. So um, now again, when it comes to a new agent, you got to watch it though, because if they're frizzled and they're nervous, you've got to be able to read them and, and assess the situation. Okay. So AJ, talk to us a little bit about placement before we go into carrier breakdown knowledge and you know all these nugget bombs yeah. you pretty much give me every single week um and i'm so grateful for you uh for doing that um but that's what it's about you know what i'm saying um is yeah show me that money show me the money so about placement yeah. show me the money yeah let me i'm gonna just rewind for one second I heard something. This is what Apple does. Apple support. When you go into an Apple store, when somebody brings in their iPhone, the Apple employee is not supposed to take your device right away and fix your problem because they know that when they do that, you're not going to learn anything and you're not going to get to understand what really your iPhone can do. So what they're going to do is help you navigate. They're not, they shouldn't ever take your phone. They're going to help walk you through and navigate so you're learning it hands on. And that's really like, it's, that's what being a parent is about. That's what being a part of a team is about. So it's just like with, you know, in business, if we have to do everything for everybody, it takes away their power to learn, not just at the moment, but when you do something, you fail and then you do it again and you get it right. How many more, raise your hand, how many more are more confident that the next time that situation comes up, they know what the heck to do. They know where to go. And they're now empowered to, to be able to say, hey, the next time this situation ar arises, what's up, little buddy, that they're going to they're gonna be fantastic at it. Nobody else is going to be better. So I, I, I heard that literally like two days ago, and I was like, oh, my gosh. Thank you, Apple support. So um, sorry for the side note. So when it comes to placement, 
right? This is how we make money. And we can go out there and write five, six, seven, eight, 10K, 15K, whatever y'all's goals are um, in a week. But if you don't place it, you don't get paid. So it's, you know, it's not really a popularity contest on who's going to be at the top of the pulse every week. It's really about the net. And another thing is these carriers, a lot, a lot of them are getting stricter. The longer I've been here, I've realized that more of these numbers matter to your longevity in this business. And two things they watch is placement and persistency. And through conversations with a lot of carriers, persistency through our organization, probably Jordan's as a whole, um, Forster's was saying this the other day, that we're actually really good at persistency, but placement is something we can always improve on, like in a pretty big way. So depending on the company, and this is what you guys have to learn over time, certain things affect your placement. That's like Americo Eagle Premier, just as an example. You guys can throw mud against the water, and if it gets declined, it doesn't affect your placement, right? That's Americo's business model. But if you get approval and they, they get issued, if that first payment doesn't go through, that affects your placement. Pretty much... I think maybe Royal does that. They're really new, so I'm trying to learn a little bit more. But everybody else, if you take an application and it gets declined, that affects your placement, a small percentage of it. So we have to get really good at measuring 10 times and cutting once. We have to get really good at making sure that as a field underwriter, we're not wasting our times, our clients' times, but also the company's money. And one way to ensure that our industry is going to be around for a long, long time so we can make what Jordan said, $15 million in nine years. I want to make a ton of money here. And whether it's, you know, I want longevity. So if we don't do our job right, they might say, hey, final expense might not be the right, right avenue. Mm -hmm. So if we Amen. do good at our jobs, these carriers continue to do well and pay us high commissions mm -hmm. and it'll be for a long time. AJ, break down like exact definition of placement and persistency and why it's so, it's so important. But then also what's a goal that they should be shooting for as far as a percentage of? Yeah, I, th I think, well, so definition of placement is when you start an application and submit it to the company, does it get approved, issued, and does the first payment go through? That's the majority of carriers. Americo and I think Royal Neighbors, I'm not 100% sure yet. So I would rather err on the side of caution. So really Americo, and I should say, is probably the only one, if you take an e-application, the Eagle Premier, if it gets declined, it doesn't matter. Okay, but everybody else, it's when I submit, does it get approved? Does it get issued? So requirements, do your requirements, jump on them quickly. And do they make their first payment? So that tells me my job is to make sure that I'm underwriting them, putting them with the right carrier. I'm filling out the application properly. I'm getting correct bank information. If I have a gut feeling that, man, like they gave me a statement, that's cool. But does it say 2021 on it or does it say 2019 or 2018? Raise your hand if that before where you say go get a bank statement and they get an old one. It's like crazy old, right? There you go. So get a new one. That means that might not be the right account number. That's happened to me before. So I learned. So things like that, that, that tells me what's really important in the process. It's not just about getting in, getting their signatures and getting out. It's really doing the job right uh, to make sure that, you know, your placement is, they say 75% or higher is what carriers like. Uh, maybe some are 70. So why not be above average and go for the 75 uh, persistency, 75% um, is what most of them are, are looking at. So for me, that's why, look, these carriers are smart. That's why they pay us nine month advances. Like this stuff is, they are, they are math geniuses. So there's a reason why that's put in place, but placement, it's all about taking an application, getting it issued first premium. Persistency is keeping it. Some carriers are three or four then it's six, seven, 13, 14, and after that, some of them may be 24, 25, but they're more concerned um, with the earlier months. And like, guys, if you follow your persistency reports, I know this isn't a placement topic, but if you notice that people are dropping off within the first three, 
months. That means you oversold them. Same thing about six months. Like if you're getting a lot of people dropping at three and six months, that means you're going too hard. You're, you're selling at too high of a premium. That's, that's the way I look at it. Um, 12, 13 months. This is 14 months. This is when you see that you need to get really good at customer service. Right? It's not about going back and rewriting them. It's really about getting them back on the books if you really can. So um, that three and six months, these carriers, it's, they don't look as much, I don't think, um, at three months as they do at six, 12, 13 months. So it's just an indicator, guys. So your three-month report or three-month, or, or, uh, three six-month, if you notice that more chargebacks happen in that time, just lower, lower your premiums. That's my recommendation. Absolutely. And then, you know, I want to go ahead and shout out to Miss Karen Braxton for coming off of not only showing your beautiful face on video, but then also telling us where you're from, which is Aurora, North Carolina. Congratulations. You just got a $25 lead credit. And then we're going all the way to Texas. Thank you, Tyson, for rocking out and literally announcing that you're from the Texas crew. Love that like American flag t-shirt. I don't think it's a t-shirt. It's like a tank top thing you got rocking out there. So phenomenal job on that one. And uh, so great job, guys. You guys are getting a $25 lead credit. I want to see your beautiful faces come off your video cameras. I don't care if you're in your PJs. I really don't care. But guys, lean in. And I want to say this. Those of you that are taking notes, put your hot topic notes, your notes that you're taking right now, and put them in the chat because people are gonna miss something. And you know what, you never know, you might be the next person that gets some lead credit. So holler back on that one. AJ, now that we've gone over growth mindset, fixed mindset, as well as knowing your recourses, knowing and establishing the systems, where are these resources coming from? There, I mean, let alone, you have no idea. I just, I got off the phone um, earlier today um, with an interview. I'm not gonna say the big carrier that this guy was from, but I tell you what guys, we have something absolutely amazing here. But the reason why NESB is so great is it's not because of the resources that we have. It is because of the resourcefulness that we've got. And guys, together, together, we're better. We're stronger. We're braver. We're more courageous. But this is where you look at AJ and his brain. And guys, these are where these resources and the innovation and the creativity starts to come into play where, hey, if you have a great idea, I know, I think Greg Baden, Danny Baden, Sammy Lawrence, guys, they got together and they straight up created that cheat sheet. Like what a lifesaver for us. And um, I think I remember Sammy Lawrence and her husband, they created the height and weight chart where it's like one big PDF and it has all the height and weights for all of the carriers. How awesome is that? And we just take these things for granted. And guys, we really need to be appreciating those people that really took the time to do that. So AJ, let's dive in. Why is it so important to pick two of your top carriers? Yeah, I had this discussion literally three hours ago with a gentleman that's brand new coming on. Um, and by the way, look, I'm not the smartest one on here. My wife has a running list legit on the misspelled words that I do. I, I, I can't spell worth a lick. I misspell all the time. So look, I'm no genius. Um, I just, I got a passion about it. So I think whatever you're passionate about, you figure it out. So um, crap. What was the question? See, uh, what was that question? What's your, what is your number one pet peeve? That was the question. What's oh, your yeah. one pet peeve towards eight no. minutes? Ready, go. Ah. No, seriously. Ah. Like what's your number one oh, pet yeah. peeve? Come on. Oh crap. Asking the same question over and over. Okay. And it really is. Okay. All right. Like if, if they have CHF and you ask me more than twice, like you don't care about your career, my opinion, you should know where to go. So, um, two carriers. So that was a conversation earlier, right? If, if we got access to a lot. So this is what I did when I first started. And I think it was very, very smart. Jordan probably told me to do it. Um, but I learned on Transamerica and it was the hardest application um, they did old school underwriting and I had the ability to have a lot of conversations with their underwriters to really figure out what this business was really about. Cause my mindset initially, uh, actually was our job is to write the business, sell the product and their job is to deny the, to deny claims. And the chief underwriter for Transamerica said, dude, you got it all wrong. And if you want to make good money and be here for, for a long, long time, change the way you think your job is to make sure that they keep their policies, they get them started and they keep them. And our job 100% is to pay claims, but it starts with you, dude. Like get good at your craft. 
So two carriers, the reason being is there's a lot coming at you. So in my opinion, the carriers that have the best product portfolios and the best story to tell is Mutual of Omaha and in my opinion, Foresters. So get your ENO if you don't have it. They have the best product portfolios. They can insure people from 15 days old all the way to age 85. They have term products. They have ULs. They have simplified issue whole life. Um, then they have fully underwritten products. So you can't lose with those, those two carriers. So I would highly recommend, especially in your first 90 days or when you start new agents off, um, that puts them in a position to need e o right at the gate, which I think is a great investment. But study those products, read the applications before you go out into the field. Don't turn on Netflix and Amazon, turn on elevation.markets and go read the applications and get to know the health questions. So when you're reading them, you don't sound like this is the first time you've been there and you know how to say the word cardiomyopathy and you know how to say atrial fibrillation. So look, it's just knowing that. And then they all have similar time frames. So get to know, in my opinion, Ashley, I, I, you know, hopefully you agree. Hopefully I'm not overstepping, but Mutual of Omaha, brand recognition, crazy product portfolio, and you can tell a value story with Mutual of Omaha. Same thing with Foresters. They have a beautiful story to tell. And when you can get passionate about that, and it's just hard, it's, it's just hard to not make sales. And it's not... <laughs> It's just hard to not keep your clients. So look, study those two carriers. And when you're in the house, if you're taking in and ups and they need to go a different direction, then that's when they're gonna new, they're gonna learn the new carriers. So write as much as you can with the first two carriers. And then when you learn as you go, they'll start to pick up certain things. It's when somebody is trying to learn all 10, 12, 15 carriers that we have for final expense that's when they get paralysis of analysis. They start to learn how to sell on price. I, I, sell, I sold on price very heavy early on in my career. Um, and instead of just selling on value, if you can focus on two carriers like that, you learn to really sell on value very early on in your career. It makes you better at your craft. Amen. You know, we teach it all the time. I know Jordan, uh, I don't even know where he got it from, but you know, when value exceeds price, people buy. And guys, we're in the realm of an emotional buy and um, just having that childlike faith. I love everything that you're saying. Now, I want to hear your value story. So you are just in love passionately with Mutual of Omaha. So if I'm your senior, tell me why Mutual of Omaha is the carry to go to. I'm ready. Let's do it. Look, they look, Mutual of Omaha has been in business Ash, for 150 plus years. Um, you've probably seen a Mahan commercials on TV. Um, shoot, you see them, you see them through the mail all the time. It's because they're in this business for the long haul and they've probably paid more claims than any other insurance company in the marketplace. Okay. So I know that if you come to me and say, Hey, I have a friend of mine that has a five-year-old son that needs life insurance, Mutual of Omaha can handle it. If you have a 22 year old son that, that just got married, they have two kids, they just bought a house and they need to cover a large liability, um, I know I can help them with term insurance. I know a business owner that doesn't save for retirement, like most business owners, and they have a product that is priced so wonderfully in the market that not only can we put life insurance on them to protect them and their family, but they can start to invest for their retirement. It's the IUL, right? And then for final expense, you can't beat the fact that they have the best writers, terminal illness, nursing home. You can add accidental if you want it, but their price structure is one of the best in the industry and they're A plus rated. There's not that many companies in, in the industry that are A plus rated. There's a lot of A's and A minuses, but not a lot of A pluses. So with Foresters, very similar story. Their member benefits to me speak so much value. So I'm going to talk a lot about the member benefits when it comes to Foresters. Um, but the same scenario, they just came out with the children's whole life. You could do a 10 year paid up, which is really, really cool that you don't get with Mutual of Omaha. They have a participating whole life. Guys, not too many companies do participating whole lives. They're usually mutually owned companies 
like a State Farm, like a New York Life, maybe a Mass Mutual, um, but not a lot of companies offer it. But they're nonprofit, so they're in business to give back to their members and people in their community through dividends. And typically, they're much higher than the companies that you see out, like State Farm and New York Life. They do college scholarship grants. I mean, you guys know this stuff. So I'm just talking about the member benefits. That's why I choose those two companies. You could do it all from 15 days old all the way up to 85. I love it. So so your top two carriers, obviously, are Foresters and Omaha. And guys, y'all can pick whichever one your favorite is. And just like what AJ said is that, guys, fall in love with a carrier and learn about them. Guys, we teach the stuff in agent training where we teach them right out of the gate Literally, it's the second day of training where we say, read every single word on a Mutual of Omaha application and a Forester's application, and then fill out a mock application. But we physically have to tell them, read every single word so that you know when you're going to that house for the very first time, you know how to say that cardiomyopathy, congestive heart failure, which should not be that hard, but dementia. Guys, all these wonderful things that you can do but if we're not doing them, and Lord forbid, if you're a builder and you've not done that yet, and you've never even read an actual application, guys, do it, right? And um, read an actual agent guide and understand what products they actually do have. So AJ, let's kind of dive in a little bit because I know a lot of people want to understand the 13 carriers. How in the world over the next 20 minutes can we really dive in to our monster carriers so that we can just have a lot more ammunition and be dangerous, like you say, in a home? Yeah, yeah. So look, I focus on our main core final expense carriers. Um, Ashley, what was that guy's name that came on on that uh, series that Harvey did? He's been in this business for a long, long time, made probably billions of dollars, older guy. He made that statement, pick one carrier, fall in love with it like you own it, and you'll sell more life insurance than anybody in your company. So I think that's great. So let's start with Transamerica. All right. So Transamerica, I know that from a product line, they have final expense. They go from 15 days old all the way up to 85. I do know that they have a term product that I can write um, that's simplified issue to some degree. Um, but they typically ask for physician statements um, over, I think, 150, 200 K. And then they do have a really good IUL. Never written one, but I know they have it. So I'm just going to go down, down the line. So at the end of the day, from America, this is Jordan's. I think Jordan's favorite carrier is America. Dude wrote a ton of America. This. So yep. tell me why, why would I want to go? We understand like the product. We understand the days. Okay. Like, why would we want to go with Transamerica over everybody else when it comes to an actual diagnosis or a medication? Okay, cool. So I know that Transamerica is, um, they're big on the heart. So if somebody's had a heart attack, stroke, things like that, uh, maybe AFib, coronary artery disease, I know I can get them day one coverage as long as it's been a year or two years old. So that's kind of their niche is the heart. So anybody that's got a heart condition, that's where I'm going to look first. And then depending on combinations and time frames. So I do like the fact that they have a preferred and a standard rate. That just means that they have a little bit more leeway on certain things. Um, so like, I know everybody runs into nitroglycerin, right? Um, nitroglycerin with Transamerica. I know for a fact, if they were prescribed it over two years ago, even though they're taking it today, if they were prescribed it over two years ago, after age 45 now, right? They threw that in there. They, they threw that curveball to us after 45 is a, is a big thing on the app now. Um, but I know I can either get them preferred or standard, depending on whether it was over a year or two years ago. The next best carrier for day one at that point is thankfully Aetna came out with their protection series. That's the only other product um, on, based on underwriting, if they're currently taking, that will accept them at a, at, at a day one product, which is crazy. Nitroglycerin, is that right? Aetna yeah. Will Okay. Yeah. Aetna is their, their new product. But my go-to when I see nitroglycerin is nobody other than Transamerica. Like I just found out about the new product recently and I just know that they take it based on their drug guide, that protection series product with Aetna, not the Ascendo, but Transamerica, I know we'll look at it. So COPD, we run into COPD often, especially in the South and they'll take it even if they're a smoker. 
So we used to have LBL, but if they're a smoker and they have COPD, no longer LBL. So it, it's a, a carrier that you're going to use often when you see COPD. I know Aetna will take it. I know Forsters will take it, but the price point of their standard product is better than the other ones. So COPD, um, AFib, it's always going to be a standard rate as long as it's been over a year, like not a brand new diagnosis within the year. So atrial fibrillation, they take it. Um, let's see here. Um, bipolar, um, they'll, they'll take it at a standard rate now. It used to be preferred. They never asked about it. That's a new change. Um, they ask about parole, felonies, things, um, but it's only two years. So that's really good, especially when you're dealing with folks under 45. Um, I know some carriers look a little bit heavier, but Transamerica is two years. Uh, let's see here. Uh, kidney disease. One thing you guys need to know about kidney disease is stage three or less, Transamerica will go standard as long as it's after a, a year. So stage three or less, they look at stage four and up as kidney failure. What else we got? Okay. So let me ask you this. Um, I know with Transamerica, you can't have more than one. Is it more than one? Yes. When it comes to standards. So yep. um, we've got to be really careful there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, kind of speak to that a little bit. Yeah. So uh, thanks for mentioning that. So let's say they have COPD and atrial fibrillation. I believe you texted me this the other day. This is a Royal neighbors case right here. So um you can't have more than two, more than one, sorry, you can't have more than one yes in the standard section. So if they have MS and COPD, they'll both accept at a standard alone, but the combination, they'll get declined. Height and weight throws into there. So if they have, um, what well, you know, let's just keep with the COPD, but their height and weight is in the standard section, then you got to go somewhere else. So hepatitis C, this is new for them. If it's been fully cured over two years, it's a standard. They used to decline hep C like all the time. It wasn't, you couldn't get it. Whether cured or not, they didn't care. It was like almost a have you ever. So it's more of a two years, no medications, cured, which happens all the time now with Harvoni. You can go standard with them. So, um, and then diabetic, no neuropathy, um, or with neuropathy, you can go with Transamerica, which a lot of companies decline. So that's a big look for me is anybody who's diabetic with neuropathy. If they have kidney disease um, and they're on insulin, that's an out because that's it doesn't fall under, it, it's a kidney problem. So they're gonna look at that as both standards if they're on insulin and they have nephropathy kidney disease, so. Gotcha. So, and I really kind of want to steer first because of time with our top five carriers and then any like little things that you want to do when it comes to the other little ones. So we got Transamerica, that's typically in our top five. Let's roll next to the next one that you're passionate about, whether it's Omaha, Americo, Foresters, Rural Neighbors, Aetna. Yeah, we can, look, let's, we can go with Foresters. Okay. Um, same thing, the COPD, it's going to be a standard um, heart attack, stroke. So if it's over two years preferred, over one standard, very similar to Transamerica. Uh, I know their cancer is a three-year question. Same with Transamerica on the spreading. Uh, you can't have metastatic cancer or reoccurring cancer, both of those. Uh, but theirs is a three-year question. They can be on insulin. Um, Transamerica is going to charge them standard. I know for a fact Forrester is going to be a preferred rate. So if somebody is in the house and they have uh, insulin, Transamerica is on my back burner. Forrester's, hey, we're good as long as they don't have diabetic neuropathy or those complications. They also changed a little bit where they asked about hospitalization for diabetes in the last two years for 48 hours. So that's something new. So when I said earlier, it's about the follow-up questions more so than just the initial, like when somebody's diabetic, hey, are you on pill, insulin, or both? How many units do you take? Were you on that before age 50? Before age 50 is because of Omaha and CFG. Um, do you have any complications? Are you on gabapentin or Lyrica? That's, we don't see a lot of kidney disease from diabetes, it's more or less neuropathy. So that's gonna be my follow-up question. Have you been hospitalized in the last two years for it? So these follow-up questions put you in a position to not just go take an application and be like, crap, they got denied. Or if you just ask two to three more questions, boom, you measure 10 times, you cut once. Um, 
liver disease, uh, like cirrhosis of the liver, standard, hepatitis C, standard, um, MS, preferred, Transamerica is the standard there, so preferred for MS. They do ask about COVID in the last 30 days, um, so that, you know, you want to make sure that for, for them. And then atrial fibrillation, any kind of heart disease that they might have where there hasn't been a surgery in the last two years, you're looking at a preferred rate. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Where Transamerica AFib pretty much is always going to be standard. As long as they, they could have gotten diagnosed with atrial fibrillation three months ago, never had a surgery for it, or just put on maybe like an Eliquis or something like that. It's a preferred rate with them. Nobody else or sorry, Royal Neighbors. So you got two options there. So um, what about when it comes to foresters with the products? Okay. So underwriting the Smart UL and the Advantage Plus, I'm not a professional there. I always do risk assessments myself. So I'm going to dig a little bit more if I need, need to go with the other, other products. Um, kids, I'm going to go with their juvenile product. Um, sorry, the, the bright future more so than the advantage plus purely because it's going to pay me faster and it's just an easier application. That advantage plus product is like the Cadillac of whole life insurance, but the application is, is pretty cumbersome. They dive a lot deeper. Typically there's seven and 10 year look backs instead of your traditional final expenses, typically two to five, maybe years max look back. So the smart UL there's, Advantage Plus is the same application. Um, something cool that Foresters is doing with the Strong Foundation, it's a term product. They don't have a return of premium on it. So a lot of us might say, ah, trend, or, uh, the Term Life Express with Omaha is really attractive to our clients because they get that return of premium. But a lot of our clients are diabetic. So Forrester's Strong Foundation is opening their they're underwriting to like a table 11 and 12, which is crazy. They can have an A1C of almost 11 and get, and get coverage on a term product, which nobody else is going to do. It's a lot of risk. So diabetics that want term insurance right now, Forrester's is going to be our go-to look because Omaha, America are going to judge diabetes a lot harder now, more so than, than Forrester's well and their strong foundation. And so then their plan right is the, obviously the simplified final expense. Yeah, sorry. Okay, it's okay. Yep, the plan right, yep, final expense, ages 50 to 85. You got a preferred rate, standard rate, and their basic plan is still a two-year wait. It's, uh, they still have to answer some health questions for that. Typically, you're not going to use that product or that rate class. Typically not. I think I've written a couple of them since they added that in. Okay, got it. So, um, and obviously the, what are the main member benefits that you typically would say in a home when it comes to foresters? Like what are the main spotlight member benefits? Yeah, uh, free living will. Um, a lot of our clients are like, man, I don't wanna leave my kids with extra. I don't want my kids fighting, just do a will. Um, college education, huge with our marketplace and our clientele, most of our seniors, they. They didn't go to college, right? And they want their kids to get a good education. But you know what it also does? You have to write a $10,000 above policy to get the college scholarship grant opportunity. So all the other ones, it doesn't matter on the face amount, but in order for them to get the college scholarship grant, it has to be a face amount of $10,000 or more. So that kind of helps with that avenue. Those are the two main ones. And then I talk about the um, emergency That's assistance the grant. grant. Yeah. Talk about, talk about that college education grant a little bit more. Okay. So um, basically any child or grandchild, they get $2,000 a year for up to four years. Uh, it could be for community college or traditional university. Um, they're orphan scholarship grant. So if they become orphaned, it's automatic and it doubles to 4,000 for four years. And I, I tell that in every house because the value is the fact that their insurance is not just about them and their family. People want to belong to something. They want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. And they're willing to pay two to three dollars potentially a little bit more than maybe a, a Transamerica non-smoker rate, just to be a part of something bigger than themselves, to know that, hey, a little bit of my premium that one of your neighbors that you don't know might get a college scholarship grant, 
because of you and you're, you have a policy with them. So hopefully it's one of your grandchildren or whatever, but they just want to be a part of something else. So right. that's huge. And the emergency assistance grant, I do hit on that often, like hurricanes come through here. Uh, it's getting to be hurricane season, September, October. So if they go through an affected area, typically it's $300 free and clear. It's grant. No other insurance company besides rural neighbors and foresters are giving that money away. So to me, that's huge. I've, I've helped hundreds of my clients get that with foresters. Same. So phenomenal job. Okay. So we've got Transamerica, we've got foresters next up. Let's do Omaha. So Omaha is going to be a little bit tougher on the underwriting. I do know that they declined for COPD. Um, the COPD medicine that we always want to look out for is Spiriva or a combination of multiple medications. That's going to lead to something more chronic. So when folks are on maybe albuterol, simple as that, then Omaha is going to be fine. They don't have a chronic respiratory condition. Um, you know, they're going to be okay. So COPD is out, but asthma is okay. As long as it's acute, nothing chronic. I know they're going to be preferred right there. Heart disease or heart attack stroke is a two year question. Cancer. Uh, I believe they have a two and a four year and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe a two year and a four year. They also ask about metastatic and reoccurring. Um, it's in other states. I know they do have a graded plan. So if, if they're over two years, but under four with cancer, leukemia, melanoma, then in some states they can get the graded plan where in North Carolina, I know it's going to be a knockout. So over two um, and over four years, you're in the clear as far as cancer. Uh, bipolar, um, it's, a, it's a decline for them. Schizophrenia, they don't ask about. They can have depression. The number one medication you're looking here and asking for is, um, sorry about that, is Abilify. If they're on Abilify, Omaha's out. They don't take COPD. They don't take lupus. They don't take MS. Um, aneurysms. We run into folks that have an aneurysm. Omaha, preferred rate. Oxygen for sleep apnea only. Doesn't happen often. Um, my wife's mom has sleep apnea. She's on oxygen. Omaha's a great carrier for her. Day one preferred. I forgot to mention, that's the same thing with foresters as well. So if they're on oxygen, O2, but it's for sleep apnea only, they can get day one coverage. Um, they don't ask about cerebral palsy, cerebral palsy. So anybody that's, uh, you know, 45 and up, maybe they were born with it, Mutual of Omaha, preferred rate class. They don't have a standard in North Carolina, no graded. So it's typically you're either approved or you're declined in North Carolina. No COVID questions. That's pretty sweet. So hopefully that crap goes away, but who knows? They might start asking about, have you had a vaccine? Amen. So, okay. So with Omaha, you've got the kids plan. You've got the term express. We no longer have the GULs anymore. So we can't do any GUL. Fully underwritten was my favorite product that was gone like two or three years ago. And then obviously the GUL express is now no longer effective since June one. And uh, so we're just left with the Omaha kids products, then also the term express. And also they have a little bit more products, of course. Um, you've got the final expense, anything else that's really key with, um, mutual of Omaha. Yeah. So guys, from an underwriting perspective, the, the main question, when you find somebody we're in the South, man, diabetes is huge. Um, like if, if they're a diabetic before age 50, pretty much every product for Omaha is going to be out. So that's a good follow-up question. Their term, they can't be diabetic before age 50. Uh, their IUL, they can't be diabetic before age 50 insulin. You're fine. No big deal with all those products. So they can be on insulin um, at age 55 and get the term life express or the IULE um, as long as it's controlled, they'll dive a little bit deeper. So um, that's, that's one thing to, to look at, you know, the children's whole life, it goes up to age 17. Um, a couple of simple questions. Uh, the tough one is going to be autism. You're going to run into that guys. If you run into somebody who has, they're really young and they have autism, write the parent or the grandparent a Transamerica whole life policy and add the child as a rider. It's got to be at least a $5,000 face amount for the adult, but that kid will have $5,000 worth of life insurance for the rest of their life. They just have to convert it, um, I believe, before age 22. It's like 85, 86 cents. So um, any child with any crazy health conditions, that's virtually going to be your go-to. And 
you know, you're going to get more insurance on the adult, but that child's going to have at least 5,000 for the rest of their life. That's awesome. And the, and the GULE, Ashley, um, dude, I love that product too, but according to Mutual of Omaha and their actuaries, this IUL is pretty dope. Like it goes to age 100. They're very conservative um, on what they predict as far as how long it will last. So their pricing structure, what they like, what most carriers for IULs or ULs, what they say is a, a non-guarantee. Mutual of Omaha is going to take a conservative approach. So it's, it should last longer than most. Um, and they're very confident that product uh, should spank the GULE. That's what they're saying. So I believe the fact that they've been in business for a long time, they probably know what they're doing. We just have to get comfortable with it. That's all it's going to be. Amen. Absolutely. Now, here's a wacky question. When it comes to that crazy spironolactone with furosemide, but the senior does not have congestive heart failure, what do you do? Where would you go? Uh, those are pretty tough combinations. I'm going to look at Transamerica. That's like my go-to. Okay. Got it. Perfect. And just kind of see and look back yep. on it. Okay. Hey, so next let's go to Rural Neighbors. Rural Neighbors is actually our third uh, top selling um, carrier when it comes to the Dream Makers team. Number one is Mutual of Omaha. Number two is Americo. And then number three is Royal Neighbors. So let's go with Royal Neighbors. Talk to us about that. Yeah. So Royal Neighbors, they do have a couple of different product lines, but let's let like the final expense, the simplified issue whole life from ages 50 to 75. I pray they go back to 80 because that would be sweet. They do not have a height and weight chart. Everybody else up at this point, height and weight chart, Royal Neighbors does not. They do not ask about diabetic neuropathy. So height and weight issue, um, diabetes, insulin, as long as it's after age 30, if they're on insulin, and diabetic neuropathy, I'm going to look at Royal Neighbors. So Royal Neighbors, trans, those are our diabetic neuropathy carriers. Let's see here. I know they're very tough on um, COPD, like chronic respiratory conditions, things like that. What I've found with Royal Neighbors, uh, if you guys have been on their website, they have a drug lookup, like you can do an RX lookup. They're like, just like Liberty Bankers, their new RX check. When you put that medication in there, it's like verbatim the answer that you get. Um, like they're strict based on that medication list. So if there's something really tough that you put in, like today, I had a guy that's on Dilantin for seizures. And I was like, oh man, that should be fine. They don't really say seizures, but they ask about neurological conditions. So neurological seizures, they don't like, and I was like, crap, uh, but I use the drug guide. So, I mean, Jordan and Chris, they're not going to know that crap. So I can't look, I can't use Jordan and Chris for underwriting stuff. I had to figure this stuff out. So um, diabetic neuropathy, I'll get on, get on note. Uh, insulin, it doesn't really matter just as long as it's after age 30, they do not, um, let's see here. I made a couple of notes. Um, AFib. Yeah, that's another big one. Atrial fibrillation, just like Forrester's. We run into atrial fibrillation a lot, guys. It doesn't matter when, no matter what, it's a preferred rate. That's what you texted the other day. They had atrial fibrillation, wasn't it insulin and diabetic neuropathy? Did that case get approved? I literally cannot remember okay. what the freaking, I'm We're sorry. We're going to say yes. We're going to say yes. So those, those are the, <laughs> right, right. Cancer's a two-year question. Um, TIA, this is another big one. Uh, a TIA is a mini stroke. So they could have had a TIA three months ago. Royal Neighbors does not ask. Hepatitis C, not, not cirrhosis of the liver. Cirrhosis of the liver, they got to be basically no treatment for 24 months. So cured, no treatment over 24 months, but hepatitis C, Jordan got an answer from one of their chief underwriters that hepatitis C is a good for a preferred rate. So that's pretty sweet. So and that's C, cured or uncured, correct? For yeah. It's not even on the yeah. application. You put Harvoni in their drug guide, doesn't say anything, don't pop up. Wow. So you're good to go. They do ask that's about awesome. coronavirus. So that kind of stinks. And I want to say uh, Royal Neighbors is the one that you can have multiple cases of cancer. Is that correct? Because mm -hmm. I know, okay, cool. So if some, yep. okay, yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. They don't like Parkinson's, like you guys write a ton of Americo. 
Parkinson's all day long with Americo. It's like my go-to with Parkinson's. So uh, Royal Neighbors, Parkinson's, MS, they're out. MS is with Americo too, right? 100% preferred. That's a great, yeah. America, I mean, you guys know Americo probably better than anybody then. So Parkinson's, MS, those things, Americo all day long. Mm -hmm. um, Forster's has these great, like kidney disease with Forster's. It's a 18, I think it's an 18 month look back for no treatment. So a lot of times you'll run into folks that, um, you know, they could have had kidney disease back in the day and through proper diet, exercise, whatever the fact that they're good, as long as they haven't had any treatment for their kidneys in over 18 months, preferred rate. Amen. Now, AJ, okay, so let's roll to, you know, when it comes to rural neighbors with the member benefits, because it's a fraternal. So what are some of the member benefits that you really hone in on with rural neighbors? Uh, same ones. They do offer a college scholarship grant. They do a will. They do a little bit. I know Forrester's does too. You get access to a suite of attorneys. So their simple living will is for free, but on their materials, their handout sheets. I know Jordan doesn't like us to use a lot of handout sheets. And I agree with that. The bullet sheet's perfect, but these member benefits, they really do sell themselves. Look, I got this one client with Royal Neighbors when they first came out. I showed a mutual of Omaha and it was $6 cheaper a month than Royal. And this dude, I showed him a video on the agent portal that talked about the member benefits. And on the screen, it popped up Papa John's as a part of their retail savings. And this dude was like, I'm in, I'm in. I can get Papa John's discounts. This dude eats Papa John's more than everybody that we know. The first couple of times he ordered it, he was he texted me and he was like, dude, I just saved more than $6 on my Papa John's orders. This is worth it. So that's value. So retail savings card, the prescription discount card, it's it's all in one thing. So I, I hit the college scholarship grant, the fact that it's uh, you know, it's based or it was founded by a group of women. So if you're sitting down with a female that goes to their church, very active in the community, man, if they can qualify health wise, they're going to be a client for life. And they're not just going to be a client for life. If they're an act, like if in their community driving uh, success in their communities, they're going to know other women that want to take advantage of that platform. So those similar benefits that Forcers has plus those. And also, guys, um, we have for the ladies leadership that was also announced today on the website at nesbinc.com. You can also register there. It's going to be super duper awesome. But we actually have Royal Neighbors, who is an all women uh, organization. They're going to be represented there. We're trying to get their CEO to actually come and have a Q&A with me. But we also have Tess from Mutual of Omaha. She is a vice president um, in marketing and sales with Mutual Bumha, and I'm doing a Q&A with her at the Ladies Leadership event. So that's going to be really, really, really cool uh, to kind of see that. So let's kind of wrap up with America because I know it's nine o'clock and then I'm going to put you on the hot spot. And so any questions that you guys have, um, this is now the time to do it. And I want to give away lead credit. Thank you, Tracy, for totally coming off of your video and writing down sell on value, not price. $25 lead credit to you, Ms. Tracy Elliott. Wonderful job. AJ, tell us about Americo. Yeah. So Americo, look, privately owned. They're not controlled by stock owners. So when you're talking about maybe you're sitting down with a small business owner or somebody who's you know a farmer in the country, people that just not corporate America, things like that, do them is going to be a good fit, right? So listen to their story when you're uh, doing your presentation, get to know your clients a little bit. So privately owned, they don't need new premiums to survive. So look, they're, they're, they're very, very financially stable. They just increased from A minus to A a couple years back. But from an underwriting perspective, they don't like diabetic neuropathy, but they can be on insulin all day long. They don't ask a time frame of how long you've been diabetic. So that's really cool. So diabetes, pill, insulin, preferred, just can't have any complications heart attack, stroke over a year. So if anybody's over a year, man, America is going to be a good look. So that's, that's huge where a lot of, a lot of our other carriers are going to be a standard with Transamerica over a year, but under two Forrester, same thing. Um, everybody else pretty much a decline. America, I know they, I know they, um, what do you say, MS, Parkinson's, Preferred. Those are just the randoms. But as far as the top five, they don't like uh, COPD, chronic bronchitis. But if they have asthma or allergies, like it's a go-to. So if somebody 
says, hey, I don't have COPD, whatever. I'm on Simbacort, Combavent, and I have asthma. That's it. My go-to is probably going to be Americo because they, ex they exclude that condition. And our job is not to just make commissions. It's to make sure that their claims get paid. So if I know they have asthma, dude, America is a great fit because they completely exclude that. If they die within the first two years, it should be a, a quick pay. Uh, let's see here. Bipolar, schizophrenia, mental conditions, they don't ask. They do have a height and weight chart. That's, I think it's pretty, pretty liberal though. Um, they do ask about hospitalization in the last, what, year to six months? Oh, six months. Yeah, in the last six months, hospitalization. They do ask about wheelchair or walker. I know we walk, run into folks that use walkers, so be very careful there. Um, look, sometimes you're going to be in a house and you're just not going to see that stuff. We, we need to be as observant as we possibly can, but we're not also walking all throughout their house. So a lot of times we have to leave it up to, you know, the honor system, the fact that our clients are telling us the truth, but let's say they're in a, in a wheelchair, but they're not confined. Maybe they just got in a car accident, something like that. And they're not going to be, they're not going to be using that within the next six months. I believe it is. Americo, they can literally say no to that question because it's not a lifestyle. They're not going to be confined to it for the rest of their life. It's just a temporary situation. So that's a big one. Um, what well, cancer is two years, multiple and, and spreading. So over two years are good as long as they haven't had multiple types or it's spread. Systemic lupus. Do we say systemic lupus? Crap. Lupus is preferred with Americo. That's another one that we run into. Um, and I believe aneurysms, they don't ask about aneurysms either, preferred. And it's from ages 50 to 85. I'm going to look at from a commission standpoint, under, under 60, probably wouldn't look at Americo first because they cut your commissions, I think, 10%. 60 to 79, 80, you get an extra bonus of 10%. And then from 81 to 85, it goes to your normal commission rate. And I think if they're a smoker, I know they have the quitting smoking advantage, but if they're a smoker, I believe, check your rate calculator, but I believe it's at age 80. If they're a smoker, they're, they're not going to underwrite the product. They kick it at age 80 as a smoker. Now also talked about that. So if we, you know, we say that over, you know, within the next three years, if you're a smoker, obviously America has the incredible, pretty much non-tobacco rates for being a smoker tobacco user. So, um, so with that being said, what do they have to go through to prove that they are no longer a smoker after 12 months? So from what I've been told from the home office at Americo is you can get a swab kit test result or a physician statement signed by the doctor on letterhead that says they have quit smoking for 12 months. Um, I've helped a couple of clients do it. Um, I... I, when I ask about the quitting smoking advantage, I want them to be 100% certain from an underwriting perspective. I want them to be 100% certain that they're going to quit. This is perfect for somebody who's on Chantix already. Maybe they've already quit for three months, six months. Everybody else asks 12 months. Don't clean sheet them. Go Americo. It's going to be a good fit. Put it in your calendar if that's the scenario and go back out six months later. If they've already quit smoking for six months, put it in your calendar to go back out and do your job to make sure it gets locked in. Cause if it, they're not going to be proactive. That's our job. It's just sad to say, but that's it. And I did hear the strong foundation uh, with Forsters. I know um, I think they're doing very similar for like two years. So um, I believe if, if they're quitting smoking uh, Forsters is going to give them a couple years to prove it. And they're going to give them a non-cigarette rate. Another thing with a strong foundation, guys, I'm, this is like 98% correct, I believe. So I'll get back to Ashley on this. If they're on cigar, they're chewing tobacco, non-cigarettes, the strong foundation gives them a non-cigarette rate. So term products, young people that dip, smoke cigars, black and mild, Swisher Sweets, Strong foundation. Sorry to get off topic for America. What did you just say? Swisher what? Swisher sweets. I don't know. What the heck? Black and miles, man. Swisher sweets. Right. right. Swisher Somebody's sweets. laughing. You know Somebody what I'm talking said about. That Ten times in a row. All right. So I'm gonna put you on the hot spot. Okay. Yeah. And um, so 
you know, um, what are the things that, you know, you see every single day as far as a combination goes? Obviously, we see people that have diabetes, COPD, congestive heart failure. Um, so tell some of the hot things, you know, what you see every single day um, as far as combinations go. Oh, geez. Ash. Jeez Why don't you guys give me some combinations? All right. Can we have some people come off mute and say, hey, this is what I've seen. What would you do? Yes. Ready, go. Who's got a question? I know that Brittany had the question, but I think you already answered it about the furosemide um, and spironolactone um, or furosemide and nitroglycerin. Would that still fall under Transamerica? Yeah, I mean, nitroglycerin is going to be heavy angina, man. Same thing for isosorbide. Okay. You see that medication, um, clopetagrel is way tougher of a heart medication what did than you just carvitolol. Clop what? Clopetagrel. I don't know how to pronounce it. Don't judge me. <laughs> Clopetagrel. Clopetagrel. <laughs> the clop. Oh, clop the clop. oh, it's like diabetes. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty oh, sure that's how you pronounce it. You can ask Siri. Clop, clopetagrel <laughs> is tougher than carvetolol. I do know that. Yeah, that's true. So keep going. What you're saying, I'm sorry. So the, like those medicines are, when you start to see your spranolactone, clopetagrel, uh, furosemide, torsemide, um, isosorbide, I'm going to lean towards Transamerica, but I want to know how long they've been on them. Like when was the first time you were prescribed that medication? If it's been over two years on most of those and you're like, you don't have congestive heart failure. A lot of times I'm going to ask, do you have a physician statement on what you're being treated for? If y'all can get that, that's great for underwriting. A lot of folks get them from like Duke hospital, Rex hospital, things like that. So it's like their problem list. Like that really helps when it comes to doing some underwriting. So I know Harvey's always taught medicines, tell the truth. You know, that's a big thing. So first and foremost, Ashley, things that I look for, number one, let's talk about like when you're taking in and ups. Um, I want to know conditions first, medication second. That's something Jordan's always taught because as a, as a person receiving it, it lets me know if you said, hey, they had a heart attack three years ago and they have COPD and they're a non-smoker. When I know those conditions, I know what questions I want to ask as follow-up questions as a person doing the underwriting that is going to give me the direction that I'm going to give them. So heart attack three years ago, I'm going to ask about, okay, are, what medicines do they take? They're prescribed a heart attack. Have they been on it for three years? Yeah. All right. Perfect. Do they have that little bottle of nitroglycerin? Cool. Was that prescribed three years ago when you had your heart attack? Perfect. I know, dude, Transamerica is going to prove that all day long at a preferred rate, as long as they're over age 45 when that heart attack was. Absolutely. So um, those types of things, um, you know, conditions first, medicine second, all day long when you're in the house, that's what I want to know as an underwriter on the phone, taking the internet. And then also too, um, especially since we have so many builders on right now, is that you guys want to teach your agents, because I know we're teaching this at new agent training level, but again, a lot of these new agents forget because they're just so nervous and they're so excited Make sure, especially with those conditions and medications, that if you are taking in and up, an agent, a lot of times will say this, but they don't have COPD, they don't have any heart attacks, they don't have any strokes, they're not a smoker. We don't need to know all that. Tell yeah. us what they have, right? And don't tell us what they don't have because then you're confusing the person that's taking the in and up, especially all, for all of you guys that are agents, tell us what they have. Okay, so um, any other really key things when it comes to um, the conditions and medications with in and ups um, or anything like that? Yeah, look, I'm, I'm just looking at the big five first. So COPD, if anybody's on Spreva, they can say they don't have COPD until they're freaking blue in the head. They got COPD from an insurance perspective. So that's a big one. Uh, like I said earlier, Abilify, that's, they, have, they have bipolar. So it's just what the in, in, insurance companies think. So those medicines like that, spranolactone is definitely a hard one. So I'm looking at the other medicines. Like if they are on spranolactone and they have four other, like a tenolol, metoprolol, a sinopril, a sartan, they got a heart condition going on. So I'm automatically moving over to Transamerica. Just where I'm going to go. That's my go-to. 
I'm, th I'm thinking of combinations, man. I just see so many different things um, from, from the big five. Like if somebody's had a stroke, they're diabetic on insulin. Let's say they had a stroke three years ago. They're diabetic on insulin and they're five foot five, 310 pounds. And they have diabetic neuropathy because they're on gabapentin. Uh, I mean, real neighbors all day long. I just know I am height because the height and weight, that's, that's what I'm looking for right there. Uh, as soon as you throw in COPD, man, they're on insulin, COPD, they got a heart attack, stroke, whatever. I mean, you can skim some drug guides, things like that, but you need to be very quick in that house because it's more likely going to be an AIG, Gerber, Great Western. And guys, look, um, there's been people that have hit promotions by doing the right thing and writing Gerber, AIG, and Great Western. So like we want to go day one all day long, but if we can't, don't don't make a square peg fit in a round hole, like go with, go with the right carrier. And then also it just kind of really speaks to the placement aspect. So the last thing that you want to do is take a wild guess and say, oh yeah, this person, they don't know if they have congestive heart failure, but they have all those six medications of spironolactone and furosemide and nitroglycerin. I'm just not going to do an in and up. So I'm just going to go with Liberty Bankers and then you get declined and then it affects your placement ratio. I know for a fact, Royal Neighbors is so stinking big about placement, huge about placement. Okay. We've not had that carrier long enough to really gain persistency percentages, but man, they will cut you off in a heartbeat if your placement sucks. So make sure we're teaching our new agents. If you don't know, especially as a new agent, don't freaking guess. Do the in and up. If somebody can't get to you in your in and up thread within five minutes, all of you guys, a lot of you that are builders, why are you so afraid of them going to the big WhatsApp? There's 180 agents in there. Probably 30 of them are managers. Someone's going to pick up their in and up. If you are not able to get to the call, if I'm not able, if Jordan or Greg or all the other line of managers in that in and up text thread. So don't be so worried about them going to the big WhatsApp to get an in and up. Okay. Um, it gives you peace of mind that that's what a team does. That's what we do for each other. So um, in closing, AJ, we have learned quite a bit. I don't know about you, but I went a little crazy with all my note taking today. Um, so guys, girls, AJ, ending tips, anything, especially, I mean, you're one rank away from hitting junior partner, super duper excited for that. Um, so any words of encouragement and it may not even be about, you know, carrier stuff. It could just be something that's on your heart. So what is it? Uh, man, I think you just got to have a passion for what we do. Like to me, this isn't a job. It's more or less of, man, I get the opportunity to go help people today. And that just puts you in a position to not get burnout. It puts you in a position to not really have any worries. Uh, it's when you know that you have a good heart and you have the opportunity to help people that you're willing to do whatever it takes to, to win. So whatever that win looks like, you know, I don't know what people's goals are. So I just think that's really important, especially when you're brand new and you might be getting your teeth kicked in. Just know when your first death claim gets paid that, man, you're probably going to get a bigger hug from them than you maybe have gotten from a close family member. Like I'm out and about all the time in similar areas. Like I see my clients, like if I'm at a subway, like I've seen clients come up and they've given me a hug before. So like to me, that's, you're not getting that in most careers. So get passionate about what you do. I think first and foremost, um, however, Jewish wisdom says, find a way to make a lot of money and then learn to love it. That's from a uh, rabbi, Daniel Lappin. So let's say you're not passionate about it yet. Maybe it takes uh, some, somebody laughing at me. I think sometimes it takes a little while to get passionate about something. That's okay. Cause with a lot of money, I know Ashley, you've probably been able to help a lot of people that maybe in the past you haven't been able to. And that's super rewarding too. And it's okay to be a little bit selfish in that regard, because at the end of the day, you're giving back to the people you love and the communities you serve. So that's very important. And uh, look, you guys are on an amazing team. Uh, look, people are on my team. I know are probably super jealous that they don't have Ashley Klee all the time to be able to sew into them. She's a big, big giver. 
And she's just a really good example of what it takes to succeed in business in general. So I think you guys already know that. But anyway, I'm, I'm very thankful to get the opportunity to come on here. You guys have, what, 38 people. We've been on for an hour and 17 minutes. This is literally the least exciting topic that anybody can talk about. But you know what? This is how we make money. And I think it's very, very important myself. Uh, read a lot of books. I don't know if you can see that up there. This is my kid's homeschool room. Oh, that's it. Read more books. Listen to podcasts. Uh, leaders are readers. So if you're not growing and developing, I heard Dusty Todd said like, like, look, Dusty's been doing this a long time. I know a lot of you guys know Dusty, but he's like, man, when I started to fall in love with the process of learning, it put me in a position to not be more successful at selling, but developing and building his, his agency. So man, personal development, development is so, so big. I know you guys already listen to podcasts all day long. You send out those goal casts like crazy. Um, so, man, that's my two cents, whatever it's worth. That was amazing. And, you know, I want to give away because I told you I wanted to give more lead credit away. So I totally said that I would give away $100 worth of lead credit. And I'm going to give it to the next person who totally wrote out. Thank you so much to Sky Heezer um, for being off a of video, but then also saying a really, really cool thing about AmeriCo, letting, the, letting everybody know that AmeriCo does take MS and they take Parkinson's and they take the heart attack and stroke over a year ago and they take lupus and aneurysms and mental conditions and hospitalizations over six months ago. So guys, this is incredible information and I hope, hope, hope you guys got something out of it. Thank you, AJ. You are absolutely amazing. You are my little insurance guru. Thank you for everything. And guys, I hope you all have a great night. Let's make it a great day for tomorrow. Let's go. See y'all at Driven in August.